The Maya offers topography with biometry and then a full suite of dry eye assessment as well. It enables us to offer myopia management in clinics and give clinicians the real chance to monitor progression in patients and really engage the um, patients and parents in that side of things, but also gives them the additional functionality of the sort of dry eye suite. So we've got tear meniscus height and tear breakup time, as well as my vomian gland imaging to really help enhance those clinics. We know that a lot of the myopia control methods aren't the cheapest. Being able to quantify how much change we're seeing for patients, potentially being able to intervene earlier as we see things like the axial length start to increase before the refractions uh, or the refractive error starts to change, allows us to intervene earlier, potentially get better outcomes for patients. It's a really quick capture. We adjust the guides. And if you can have a really quick blink for me, and eyes nice and wide, hold still there. Perfect, and that is that capture done. Practices have been really enthusiastic about it, particularly given the change in um, the GOC guidelines back last year. When we've done that initial capture with the topography and biometry, we get six axial length measurements that are averaged out, so we can get a really repeatable measurement. We then get data relating to the, uh, the keratometry. Um, we get a screening for keratoconus as well, so that we can ensure that the patients are entering the correct pathway. And we're also able to do a pupillometry assessment as well. So we can check the pupil size under different lighting conditions. We can also then start to design lenses from here using that surface topography and then monitor the patient's axial length and trends going forwards. We've launched the Maya a few years ago um, and it's grown, myopia management has grown exponentially in that time and particularly given things like COVID as well where we've seen children spending a lot more time indoors and um, more time on screen so all these factors that we know impact on the development of myopia have actually kind of been compounded over the last few years so we're seeing a real sort of boost um, in practitioners wanting to take care of, of these patients, wanting to intervene earlier and having a device like this allows them to not only only do that intervention but then monitor how effective it is and potentially sort of build and make those treatments better for their patients. We also have a suite of dry eye functionality so tear breakup time, blink or non-invasive tear breakup time, blink analysis, um, tear meniscus height and my bobian gland imaging that allow us to quantify loss and that all pulls out to a dry eye report as well which can again help increase compliance. We know that not everyone's particularly compliant with their dry eye treatments so being able to give figures can really help with that as well.